hello beautiful people welcome to my youtube channel if this is your first time here my name is miss linda a special needs educator a child neuropsychologist and a speech and language pathology welcome to my youtube channel and we have a guest today welcome Thank you, Linda. My name is Papechua. I'm an occupational therapist, a pediatric occupational therapist who loves working with children. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you, Pops, for coming, for being here with us today. So, guys, today we are going to talk about... You remember the last video? On the last video, we talked about sensory... What is sensory processing disorders? And we discussed all the seven senses. So today, we are going to learn more on the same, on the sensory processing difficulties. But this is the thing that I, I know you are out there and asking because for the last video, it was just basics. Now for this video, I know you, had, you, you have questions of now for this video, what do we have? So with PAPS here, we are going to, to, to learn more on the same, on sensory processing difficulties, but into details. We are going to go into deep and deep and deep and deep. And make sure you have your pen and your book so that you can learn as much as you can so pops welcome so this is the question i might want and i know people out there are looking or they want to know who are the people who are the children or who is the, the people who, or the children who are probably going to experience the sensory processing difficulties so with the sensory processing difficulties you mm -hmm. find uh, the children who are on the autism spectrum disorder mm -hmm. majorly have the sensory processing disorders. Okay. They have this challenge processing their sensory. Mm -hmm. And then also you might find children who have no particular anything, no diagnosis, no nothing. They just have a problem with processing their sensory. Mm -hmm. And then also children who have any global developmental delay, mm -hmm. preterm children who came early at mm -hmm. an early stage of their life, some mm -hmm. have challenges with the sensory processing. Those who they, they were yeah, born they were born earlier. earlier. Uh -huh. So there are those who have the challenges with the sensory processing. Mm -hmm. So that's the range of children who might have sensory processing disorders. Okay. So the most the, the most important thing to note, it doesn't have to be linked to any, any condition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's an error we make because we think because already they have sensory processing disorders, we quickly jump and say the child has autism. As I say, they have ADHD. Yes, just yes. because they have just a... because they have a sensory processing disorder. So it's not a must a child to like have special any special needs. No. It's just even a, a normal even child. Just a, if we say quote mm -hmm. normal child, it's just the problem with processing sensory. How you process your senses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, can you take us through? those senses, the, the, through the, the senses, the, what people can be able to identify and see when it's come to the difficult with sensory. Yes, so mm -hmm. I'll start with the most common ones. Mm -hmm. You find that children who now block their ears. They really mm -hmm. hold their ears mm -hmm. when you're in a parade, when you're in lunchtime, mm -hmm. any school activity or any outdoor activity, mm -hmm. in the playground. Mm -hmm. These are children you'll find blocking their ears mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're finding the auditory, the, that, the, the input that is coming for them mm -hmm. when they process, it's mm -hmm. a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. So they mm -hmm. don't want it. They are, they are really sensitive. Mm. So when they are sensitive like that, they will block their ears to, to remove a bit of the sound. And I've seen that a lot with children who have autism. Yes, they, yes. They, they, that's the, the prohib they show, they exhibit that kind of uh, challenge. Yes, so mm -hmm. starting with the most common, that's what we normally see. Mm -hmm. If you work also, if you're in a school setup or mm -hmm. you work with any children with special needs, mm -hmm. you will actually see that a lot. Mm -hmm. Broken the other one, yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one is visually. There are children Visual. who don't want light. A lot of light, you'll mm -hmm. find they're either closing their eyes or blinking a lot. Mm -hmm. So they don't want that too much light. Mm -hmm. And then if I just go back to the auditory, mm -hmm. there are those who now want the loud noise. There mm -hmm. are those who just want to hit something, go close to the radio, mm -hmm. really go to the speaker and now listen the radio from there. They want that feedback. But then mm -hmm. they want that. They want that a lot. They want that a lot of feedback. You know. How comes? How, how about those who d now doesn't want the round? They want the, the silent. The, the moment silent is. ones. So mm -hmm. there are those who are sensitive and there are those who seek it. Mm -hmm. There are those who really go for it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you will hear the term sensory seekers. They seekers. actually look for it. So can you just briefly, with just a second, explain to us the difference between sensory seeking and 
avoid it. Avoid it. It's sorry, seeking and it's a, sorry, avoid it. So, because I know someone is lost so, on those two terms. So the thing, the sensory mm. seeking, I'll mm. take you to hide and seek. When you play hide and seek, mm -hmm. you are supposed to look for that person who is hiding. Yes. So that's the term of sensory seeking. seeking. They will look for that sensation. Mm. They will actually look for it. Wow. They wow. will hang, they will roll, they will swing. They will look for whatever way they will get it. Wow. They put the volume up. Avoiding is when you're playing hide and seek, you are the one hiding. Mm. You will avoid that other person. Mm. So you avoid that kind of sensation. Or mm. that how that sensation makes you feel. Mm. You'll just take a corner and go to the other side. Mm. So that's the, the, the simplest the definition of sensory seeking and sensory avoiding. Oh, okay, okay. And now we, we continue with other... So then uh, the, I said the auditory one is the most uh, most most known. Eh? Known, yes. Then the other one Even is... parrot no most the auditory. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. The other one is the visual, the mm. light. The children either try to avoid the light or really mm. go to bright light. So mm. there's, the, the, there's the two. Mm. And then the olfactory, mm -hmm. they will smell. They will smell everything. They will smell your shoes, your shirt, shirt yeah. your come close to your skin. There's when one wants to smell my hands, yes. legs. And they, they, they want different. to smell the lotion because mm. even if with this particular child, if you change your lotion, mm. they'll tell mm. you, Miss mm. Linda, you changed your lotion today. Wow! So they have they seek that kind of smell. So if we look at the seeking and avoiding, mm. now we'll be able to see mm. who is looking, who is who avoiding. Is. There are those if you put a certain kind of perfume, they won't come close to you because they feel it's it's too much. It's can they get to cry? Like, yes, they will cry. They won't stay close to you. So you can imagine you're a teacher walking around class. The child will avoid you and go the other side. Because and if it. you're not aware, mm -hmm. you will punish this individual child Whoa. because you are saying, uh, you, why are you moving from your seat? And this child, sometimes the children find it even hard to explain what is the problem. Mm. How do you tell your teacher she's not smelling nice? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, okay, this, is being, this thing is deep. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Then now we, we've done the olfactory, then we now come to gustatory. Mm -hmm. We find that these are the children who will avoid some, some textures. Yeah. Let's say, for example, the children who will stick to blended food for a very long time. Oh. They stick to blended food till they are five years, six years, seven years. They're still eating blended food. So that's gustatory. They find it hard to, to maintain a certain texture in their mouth. Mm. They don't want that bumpiness of the food. Mm. There are some who can't stand dry food, like really bread. dry, like bread. bread. They, they some even see that particular kind of food and they start like vomiting, like wanting to vomit. They're finding it hard to process a particular kind of texture mm -hmm. and it's not pretending. Mm. They, they just find it very hard. And you'll actually see them mm. like regurgitate, they want to vomit. That's how you able also to know it. It's not pretending. Mm, there isn't those real. who are even teenagers, but they can't take a particular food. So it mm. is not pretending. It is how it's, they are processing mm. it. Yeah. All right. And then the next sense. And then also now we have proprioception. There are those who now seek for those just a, a jumping. Brain, a the proprioception is, is if, if we remember, it is how our body perceives movement. Okay. So our joints are part of the proprioception. Mm -hmm. So there are those who want that constant feedback on their joints. You'll find that children who just keep on jumping up and down and doing like this. And they and they want that feedback. And you know mm. when you see them jumping, they're not doing the light jumping. They're, they're doing the heavy jumping that will give their bones that feedback. Okay. So that's who the problem is. And that is most in autistic children. Yes. Oh. And then there are those now who, who avoid. They don't want anything to do with the jumping. So if you tell them to jump they will even they cry. Will cry. They and will drop you... themselves on the ground. And you think this child is just being, <laughs> can't understand the rules or But it is because they don't want that, that, that input. Oh. And then also now we have the vestibular. Mm -hmm. There are those who just want to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin until tomorrow. And it there are doesn't those, get the, yes. that is now seeking. That, sensory, yes, the sensory is seeking. I wish I could have high five you, but because of social distancing, I will not. <laughs> but that's seeking now. There are those who now spin and spin and spin and spin. And then there are those who do not want their feet to leave the ground. If you put them on a swing, mm. you are in big trouble. On the, they will scream. They won't allow you to, 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 to swing them. Mm. They won't even go on the bouncing castle. They won't mm. have anything that will destabilize and make them feel like, whoa, my legs are not on the ground. Perhaps, and there's another child. The end is always moving. Can you see that a vestibular? Yes, because they are seeking to move the fluids in the vestibular system. They always so anything like that they move the fluids within their head, it can be, or it can even be visual. There's a different visual feedback that you'll get in your eyes if you keep moving your head. So him, it can be two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Okay.
Okay. So I think I've covered most of them. Them most yeah. of the the, the most the, the most the, really the most ones that you you'll hear parents say my child has, has challenges this with this. Yeah. Oh, so parents, I hope you have looked and you have heard of all the challenges that comes with these chances. And I know some of you are like, my child is doing like that, my child has this, my child has this. And this is not, this content is all not only for parents. This is content is more even for teachers, mm. both the special needs teachers and the regular yes, teachers. Yes, this yes. content is also for caregivers who have the children mm. so that you can even avoid punishing these children by yes. thinking it is, it, you know, yes. it is a, it's a, it's a, 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 another challenge or they are just becoming tough-ended. Mm. This content is for anyone who is working with children, either a doctor, either a nurse. If you're working with the children, I think this is your video. Sit down and make sure you take notes and you ask as many questions as you can. I'll leave uh, Pap's emails, email on this video so that you can be able to connect with her and reach her. I reach out to her for her services and also to be able to ask her questions that you might be having about the challenges that uh, that has, uh, comes with sensory processing difficulties. Thank you guys for joining me on this video. I hope you have learned as much as I have and I hope you have taken the note as much as you can. This is a kind of a video you can even read 10 times to be able to capture every single one that Pops have taught us today. Thanks Pops for being on the on this video again and being willing to give us this knowledge. Most welcome. Guys, make sure you also watch your make sure you also share and you also make sure you also subscribe make sure you subscribe you know the button is there just click the subscribe button but more thing that i want you guys to do for me is to share so many people out there need this knowledge many out people out there in the out in the africa in all the continent they need they need this content please make sure you share as much as you can and as i always say tell a friend to tell a friend to tell an enemy to tell another enemy to tell the other friend of their enemies thank you so much for watching see you on the next video God bless. Bye-bye.